Oh, goodness, yes. Hello. You shouldn't give me a mic. I might start singing. Um, okay, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, this is pretty exciting. It's a good buzz in the air. Um, we have a local filmmaker here today to see you. It's great to have a local filmmaker, but of course this filmmaker is way beyond any standard local filmmaker. Uh, we could have filled this room out about ten times over, of course. Uh, well done for you guys for getting in first and reading your emails. <laughs> um, we, uh, he's also a filmmaker that is the most regularly cited filmmaker with new applicants to the course. His films are massively popular, as we know, but are also well-respected, well-reviewed, and they make some money. Um, one thing that we should also recognize, though, is uh, with this particular filmmaker, um, I feel that he's gone beyond what many artists and filmmakers ever achieve. And all the way back to Space, which is very much my era, down to Baby Driver, which is more yours, He's managed to take his craft, his filmmaking, and his artistry uh, into a place where it's become part of our popular culture. If you consider the films, the sequences, the jokes, we actually recount them. And that's a massive achievement for any filmmaker. So it's with uh, absolutely massive excitement that we can end our year together with such a monumental high. Uh, we're going to watch a quick show reel, and then he's going to come out, speak to you for a while, and then you're going to ask some extraordinarily searching questions, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's him. He's nervously in the background there. Um, okay, so Mark, if you can run the reel. Okay. That's more like it, isn't it? Okay. Please raise the roof for Edgar Wright. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming. I, this uh, lecture hall, like, I do not remember this bit at all. <laughs> this is all new to me. I haven't even had a chance to walk around the old part of the building. Um, but it's great to see you here. Uh, I haven't actually been in Bournemouth, I think, for like, um, uh, like 17 years or something. And weirdly, the last time I was here was, was Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, where we decided to um, have a drunken night out in Bournemouth on the way to Devon. <laughs> and it did not end well. Um, uh, but anyway, listen, I, I wrote a little something down, um, and then we can get into stuff. But um, uh, I actually wrote this uh, thing for like a prize that I'm actually not going to be at the ceremony yet, so we'll skip over that bit. Um, <laughs> so, but I was saying, uh, like, it's, well, it's a real honour to be back here uh, to this uh, college, famous for its prestigious film and TV course, because despite reports of the contra uh, to the contrary, I didn't actually do the prestigious film and TV course. <laughs> um, I, would go even, I would go even further to say that I owe my break in my career to the fact that I was turned down for the film and TV course in 1994. Don't hiss yet. It's going to get nice again. Um, and I went off to make a movie that very summer, partly in a fit of peak. Um, if I had been accepted onto the course back in 1994, the second time I had applied, I probably wouldn't have made my first low-budget film that summer. Um, I wouldn't have moved to London that autumn to edit it. I hadn't, wouldn't have started going to comedy gigs around that time. And I wouldn't have met people like Matt Lucas, David Walliam, Simon Pegg, Jessica Hines, all of whom would sort of help me get my break in, in TV and later in film. Uh, so I guess I have to attribute the very unique way I got my career started to the fact that this noble establishment turned me down twice. LAUGHTER <laughs> uh, so I guess thank you for rejecting me. Um, <laughs> it's the best, worst thing that ever happened to me. Um, however, this is the nice bit. It is true to say that I went to this college between 1992 and 1994 doing a national diploma in audiovisual design, a two-year course that frequently prompts the question, what is that? Um, uh, but it was, I, I was here for two years. I, I don't know if that, there's equivalent of that exists anymore, a foundation course, I guess. So it was kind of like a foundation course in like film and photography and TV and radio. Um, 
It's also true to say that I had an amazing time here and I made friends who I still keep in touch with and some of whom I went on to uh, work on my first movie with. Um, I'd also say that even though I didn't actually do the course that I wanted to do here, I did receive an education in many of the skills that would be proved instrumental to me later in my career, uh, as well as the course itself, which involved photography, journalism, radio, TV training. You know, I also like, um, uh, you know, learn how to edit on like, there was, I know I haven't been to the old building yet, whether this even exists, but there used to be these tape to tape machines up in like somewhere over there. <laughs> and uh, one thing, as you can probably tell by my tan, I'm not a sun person. So the one good thing about Bournemouth is when it was a sunny day, nobody would be in the edit suite. I would be in the edit suite. <laughs> Everybody else was down the beach and I would be in the edit suite learning how to edit. And I edited some of my first films on, that, on those edit suites. And I also used to, um, I, used to I taught myself how to edit. We had some edit courses, but that was mainly for the film and TV course. But those machines were like sitting there, especially on like sunny days, as I said. And so... Um, you know, frequently, uh, whilst everybody was at the beach, I was like living like Gollum in the edit suite, <laughs> subsisting on vending machine coffee and Snickers bars called marathons back then. Nobody remembers marathons. Do you remember marathons? Okay. Um, not only did I cut, this is like really uh, nerdy, but you'll appreciate it. Not only did I make my own, cut my own films together, I used to learn how to edit by cutting, trying to cut together. Um, Back in the, 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 there used to be the Video Nasty scandal, which was in the early 80s and went through until the 90s, where a bunch of horror films were banned or heavily cut by the BBFC. And a guy over at the Bournemouth University that I met in the library there had all of the Video Nasties. And so I used to borrow them off him, and then I used to watch them in the viewing booth at the library here. And when they used to get really gnarly and extreme, I used to angle the TV away from the door so people couldn't see what I was watching. <laughs> and then I had, like, I was a big fan of the film The Evil Dead, but the Evil Dead version that was available uh, on VHS was cut by like eight minutes. And then my friend had an uncut copy, so I thought, I'm going to edit these two things together. So I went up into the edit suite, I told you it was nerdy, and I edited <laughs> together my own version of Evil Dead. So that was like something that whilst other people were getting a suntan, I was up there like doing the dweebiest edit of Evil Dead. <laughs> I, I later got to meet Sam Raimi, the director, and I told him this story, and he said, why would you do that? <laughs> um, I saw, there, now the, this, not this lecture theatre, but the other one, which I think still exists in some form, uh, I saw many films in that lecture theatre that expanded my horizons into classic film and international cinema. Some of them I slept through, um, and, uh, but most of them I saw, and I also fr frequently burrowed down in the library uh, over there. It's actually where I, I wrote my first film in the computer room there. There used to be like a bunch of PCs. I used to go over to the university library because it was a bit bigger. Um, but in the, in the art college library here, I wrote my first movie. Um, also, I, I don't know what still exists of it, but I remember they used to, in the film section, there used to be this book called um, Cult Movies by Danny Peary, and there was like a copy of that. And I didn't, I don't think I ever took it out, but I would go and sit in the library and just read that book and memorize it. And I later got my own copy of it, but I remember that vividly. And, you know, I also like, fondly really remember the camaraderie of my fellow students and also the encouragement I got from tutors on the AV course. Um, you know, I got my start when I was a teenager in Somerset making amateur movies on Super 8 and then later on video. And I continued to make these films while I was here at Bournemouth. You know, like I said, I edited some of them upstairs. I even made like a crime short called Double Take that was partly shot on campus. That we did like a bank robbery, you know, a very beta early version of Baby Driver that people were running around corridors like making out that the art college was a bank. Um, but also I am a Dorset boy originally. Like I was born in Paul Hospital. I grew up in Swanage until I was like seven years old. And my formative experiences with cinema all took place in Dorset. This is absolutely true. The first film I saw was Star Wars at the age of three on Westover Road uh, in 1978. Uh, my parents used to take me to Westover Road, the two cinemas that don't exist anymore, uh, as well as Paul Art Centre as well. Um, and when I returned here for art college, I did exactly the same thing, watching a lot of movies with friends at the same cinemas. Uh, and at the, at the end of the two years I was here, I reapplied for the film and TV course. And again, they said I was too young to be a director. 
and that I should go off and work in the industry for five years before coming back. And they were mostly right because I was too and young and naive to know what I was really doing in my first film. But I did get a lot of experience in the following years before, you know, making TV comedy, which I'm still very proud of, and then 10 years after Bournemouth making my second debut feature, Shaun of the Dead. Um, so, you know, it, I, I remain like weirdly, I was very, very proud of being here, and like it is like sort of such a formative experience, like being on this campus, and weirdly proud of the fact that I'm denied a place on the film and TV course. <laughs> but it is like, I stand by the fact that my time here at Bournemouth was a huge help in terms of expanding my horizons, learning key, sil ski key sil skill sets that I still um, use, and putting me on my eventual path. So, uh, I guess thank you for the great time and thank you for turning me down. I still love you lots. <laughs> um, we could take some questions, I guess.